Hi, my name is Dirk Eikema, and today I'm going to be giving a speech titled Geeks and Digital Communication. It's more likely than you think. I'm giving this speech for a college class titled Intro to Communication 1410, taught by Janet Stumbo at Central Lakes College in Brainerd. All right, when was the last time you sent an email? How about a text or an instant message? It might surprise you to learn that most, if not all, innovations made to digital communication have been made by geeks essentially trying to make their jobs easier. Everything from the first email that was sent in 1971 to the advent of the cheap ISPs of the early 90s, and then, of course, you've got instant messaging and online gaming and even voice chat and video conferencing. These were all innovations that were pioneered in some way, or no, some way or another by the geeks of the world. Now, specifically, in 1968, ARPANET, the precursor to the internet, was first launched. And then, of course, three years later, the first internet, the first internet, the first email was sent. And it was sent to the other members of the project who um, were working on it so that they would know how the email system worked and so that they would know how to make use of it. Now, this, this first innovation would eventually, of course, become email as we know it, as well as the internet as we know it, with the early 90s ushering us into cheap ISPs like Prodigy and AOL, uh, email servers like Outlook Express and things like that, and then, of course, then you got instant messaging programs like AOL Instant Messenger, Yahoo Messenger, MSN, and even ICQ, as rare as it is these days. Um, and right around this same time, uh, online gaming started to come into the forefront. Games like Quake and Duke Nukem 3D and, you know, any number of different games. Uh, they were starting to come into the forefront and they were able to be played over the internet. The problem was that though people could play against each other on the internet, they didn't have a way of communicating with each other. They couldn't set up matches by themselves, and they had no way of communicating with, say, a teammate if you were playing a game with team play. And that is where services like Total Entertainment Network, Heat.net, and Mplayer came into play. These were services that would allow players of different games to get in and chat with each other, and in some cases, uh, mplayer.net was actually the pioneer of voice chat. But anyway, these services would allow gamers to get together and essentially, you know, talk to each other. Now, none of these services exist anymore. Though mplayer was the pioneer of voice chat, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, but instead, these services have evolved into... Um, into services that we see nowadays in the form of GameSpy and Steam. Even console services like what's found on the Xbox 360, the Wii, and the PlayStation 3 are examples of this. Heck, even the medium that I'm using to give my speech right now, YouTube, could be considered a form of digital communication, engineered, of course, by geeks. That isn't necessarily to say that digital communication is... Um, the sole responsibility of the geeks. I mean, anyone can use it. You know, you've got your gamer geeks, and then you've got your casual internet users like, you know, 40-something-year-old women who want to communicate with their friends across over on the other side of the country, and even um, big businesses, corporations, using teleconferencing and video conferencing. These were all innovations made, made by geeks, but made available and used by everyone. So, ultimately, um, where was I going to go with this? Oh, I remember. So, ultimately, though geeks were the pioneers of the digital, the digital age, they're not the only ones who use it, of course. But, nevertheless, the next time you send an email to someone or text or even an instant message to someone, think about the geeks who made it possible.